Okay, <clears throat> continuing on with the 4-H loop and container, let's do something a little bit more interesting and a little bit more useful. This actually comes up in the forums uh, from time to time, so I might as well go ahead and document it now. Uh, what we're going to do is, well, first we're going to start by getting rid of the script task from the last one. There we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the, uh, the for each loop that we've just done, we're going to take and we're going to create a separate text file for each individual item in that loop. And if you want to know how we got this far, then go back and watch the intro because these, these build off of each other. I'm not going to go back and, uh, and reteach the first video. So what we've got here, though, is I'll, I'll just give you a quick rundown, is we've got a variable mapped to current location that's coming to us from the database, from the record set destination. And we're going to take each one of these, there's only two of them, there's Dallas and Santa Ana. So we're going to take each one of these guys and we're going to put them, uh, we're going to query the database based off of this value and then we're going to create a, a separate text file based off of them. And we're going to put them in this folder right here. So what I need to do first is uh, I need to give myself a bulk insert and we'll just call it, I mean a, a data flow. Now I'm going to go inside the data flow, and I'm going to add an OADB destination. Oh, come back here. And then I'm going to add a flat file destination. So to this guy, I'm going to say, give it a SQL command. And I've already got my query ready, so I'm just going to kind of cut and paste this right Here and I'll replace that with a question mark for my first parameter. I'll come in here for parameter zero and I will choose wherever you are. Did you see it? There it is, current location. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking the current location that is the uh, that is the the looping variable from the loop and I'm passing it into here so what I'm saying is I'm is for each time every time that loops I'm gonna run this query and I'm gonna pass it the current variable okay so I'm gonna query first for Dallas and then for Santa Ana and if I had a hundred of them then it would run this code a hundred times right so let's see I'll choose my columns well you're not gonna be able to do that from here it won't let you verify it because, uh, here, let me parse it though. I'm going to parse it. I may be able to get my columns from there. Nope. Well, fine. You're not going to be able to verify it because you don't, because you don't have anything in this parameter. Um, you don't have anything in there yet. Oh, come on. Stop that. Oh, I know what the problem is. This, uh, this has a, a problem. It, it, it it's not going to run SQL in the same way. I'm not entirely sure how this works, but, uh, <clears throat> the problem it has is that uh, um, the both tables have location ID in them. Even though I'm not selecting it both, it's going to query the metadata from both of them, and it's and it's going to say that it's ambiguous. So I'm just going to take a server name here instead. I should be able to do it there. There we go. So I got location name and server name, and you know if you've got that kind of uh, if you've got that kind of problem, then you, you may want to call an SP or a view from here instead of joining the tables directly like I did. Um, but I'm doing it just, just for a, a little quick uh, demo here. So I'm going to create a new file source, and everything shows up on my other screen there. So I have to keep dragging it over. Okay, let's call this the cursor files. And the file name, I'll call it C colon backslash data backslash... And it really doesn't matter what you call this because you're going to replace it with your file name anyway. You know, you just have to put something in here. You get the columns. We want them to be pipe delimited. That's always best. We got the two columns here. And all is good. I'm going to overwrite the data in the file. Absolutely. Uh, i got to go to mappings now. I've got my map. Okay. Now I've got my file name, right? So let's backtrack and talk about what we've done here real quick. First of all, 
we start here. We've got our OADB destination. We're putting it to a record set and saving that to a variable. Then we're taking that variable and we're using it here in our collection for our ADO enumerator, and then we're we're mapping that to the to the uh, the variable that we used in the record set. Now we're taking the variable mappings, and we're we're saying take the current location as index zero of that. And if again, if you don't understand what that is, then go back and watch the first video. And so everything is good there. <clears throat> so now we're mapping. Now we're looping through, and for each one of those in current location, we are going to run everything inside of here. Okay, that's how that works. So now I've got my data flow. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to call this command with that uh, current variable, right? Because I've got the current variable mapped right here. So for that current variable, I'm going to I'm going to to query where uh, the location name equals the current variable name. And then I'm going to create a text file based off of that. And right now I'm not doing anything, right? I mean, I haven't done anything at all yet. So what I need to do now is I need to make this guy dynamic. So when I come here to cursor files is where that needs to be done. Right here under expressions, I will say I want the connection string to be equal to an expression. Right, and I want that expression to be c colon backslash. Now you have to use two backslashes in here because uh, it's an escape character. If you don't, then you'll get an error. Backslash data whack whack here plus, and then our variable name current location plus dot txt, right? So we're building this. Now, if I had evaluate expression, I'm going to need everything except what should be in the variable um, because I haven't done it, I haven't run that code yet, so there's nothing in the variable. If I had put something up here in current location as a default, I would be seeing that default right here. But you notice how these two escape characters right here, right? Um, there's two of them here, but only one of them gets parsed, so that's... That's, uh, that's an escape character. Uh, okay, so I tell it okay. I've got that. And I've got that. Uh, we should be golden. Let me save that real quick, and let's see what happens. Let's just run it and see what happens. Like that, like that. And you saw it loop through there real quick. I'll stop that, because it's done. And you notice here I have one for Dallas and one for Santa Ana. And I've got my boxes in Dallas. And I've got my boxes in Santa Ana. So there you go. That's pretty cool, right? So that's how you would use a for each container to loop through and create a different, uh, a different text file for every single object in the loop. Good luck.